Hey everyone, it's Jeannie here. Today I am joined by award-winning singer whose songs are sung in churches all across the world, Phil Wickham. He is currently on tour, so he's backstage somewhere um, <laughs> for his next tour date. Um, and we're here to talk about the album, the new album, I believe, and just whatever it is that the Lord is doing in this season. Thank you, Phil, for joining me. Oh, it's so good to be on. Thanks for having me. Yeah, so we were talking a little bit before we started. You are on the road. You're wrapping up uh, the tour, but you said um, this has been one of the best tours uh, that you've experienced. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's awesome. It's been my favorite, not one, it's literally my favorite tour I've ever done. Mm -hmm. um, and I've been doing this for a while, you know. I'm 62 years old. No, I'm just kidding. I'm a... <laughs> I'm I'm actually I'm 39. So I, I and I signed with a label when I was 21. So I've been doing it almost. I mean, I've started leading worship when I was 13. So I've been I've been leading worship a long time, but I've been doing it professionally almost 20 years, which is wild. I believe I just put I just released my 10th studio album, if you include the Christmas ones. And so Incredible. with all these songs and all these experiences, and there's a lot of them have been so beautiful. And not to diminish the beauty and incredible ministry and amazing times and all those but this one it it just feels like a culmination of so many of of the songs and what god has done and um uh i mean everything from the crew and the culture on the road to the nights uh, almost every night has been sold out in arenas across the country and there's just something it's been so um beautiful to see the kingdom of god in such an expansive way come together everywhere from newark new jersey um, all the way down to San Diego and in between. Um, every single night has been explosively beautiful and people so, the church so ready to jump in and sing with us. Um, the night, like our band is rocking and we're loud and there's moments where our friends are at the, at, at the concerts like, man, it can't, you should not turn up anymore because it is loud. But there's moments I couldn't hear you because people were singing so loud, all these songs and, uh, and wow. every night, God really laid it on our heart to, um, we just, we, and I don't, I've, I've done it randomly, but it's not something I do every night. Uh, but me and Brandon Lake, who he's sh I'm sharing the tour with, it just felt so obvious. We were supposed to like, give people a chance to know Jesus, which at first you're like, well, it's a worship night. Won't everybody know Jesus? Um, but we just felt like that's what God was calling us to do. And every night we like a legit gospel presentation and then lights up like, like who wants to receive Jesus? And I, it has been crazy. Every like thousands and thousands of people have lifted their hands and the church coming along them and praying for them and, and us sitting, and we get to send them to churches in the area. I mean, even security, like there was one night where a whole wow. row of security guards at the venue all raised their hand and the, and the front mm -hmm. row of, of the people, they all, they all collapsed on the security guards and started hugging them. I mean, it was just like, it's just, it's just I guess this is my favorite tour because because it's like every everything I love about what happens on these nights is magnified and explosive to a point of like I can't process this and this is this is too much goodness and too much beauty and I'm just like I'm gonna cry right now I'm just I've been like a wreck this whole tour. Wow. Well, I'm about to cry too. I'm it's all so about awesome. souls. I think that to me is the number one thing of, of why I exist is to share the hope of Jesus with others so I am just yes. I celebrate that with you that is so incredible uh, what a reward right you know um I want to talk about that 10 10 albums 20 years of doing this I used to be a pop singer so didn't know Jesus or anything um so I know what it is to make music and make people feel good for a couple minutes and then walk away and leave them in the state they were in. And now I'm a singer too, I'm a worship leader. And now I know what you're talking about, what it is to sing and to see souls come to Jesus and things like that. Talk about that, the, you know, I didn't grow up that way. You have been doing this for many, many years. Does that ever get old? Is that part of what your purpose is? Talk about that a little. Um it uh no in a sense it okay there's two there's a couple cool a couple answers um anything can get old even the most beautiful sacred stuff if you're not intentionally keeping your heart soft to the holy spirit and the things of god right um uh if you there's it takes an intentionality of 
of sitting at the feet of Jesus in your own life and in your own heart of begging Jesus for fresh revelation of, of come, crying out to him, of spending time with him, of listening to his voice, like those things in the quiet secret place need to happen. Um, or even the most beautiful explosive looking ministry um, can, can get mundane because your heart isn't looking at it through a view of the beauty and, and grace and kindness and love and person of Jesus. You're just doing your job. And, uh, and, and, and so it, it all, it all starts with us intentionally um, taking, taking steps to follow Jesus in our own life and asking Jesus to keep our hearts soft and saying no to the things that are going to bring death into our life and saying no to the things we know aren't of him and saying yes to the things we know are of him and, and, uh, and spending time with him and, and treating Jesus not like a commodity to be shared or to be sold, but a friend to have. And when that's happening, um, then it, then it never gets old and it never should get old because it's the most incredible thing in the, in the world, watching people literally walk from the kingdom, from darkness into light and that you got to be a conduit um, the, for the Holy Spirit to use um, to make that process happen. It's like the best It's the best. And, uh, but also, man, there's, there's moments where I've been a part of, those invitation moments at churches or whatever, where it just felt like, yeah, this is what we do. Routine. And I've, yeah, this is like, oh, praise the Lord. Awesome. Let's sing the altar call song and people come forward. And like, um, it's actually why I wrote a song called, there's a song a few records ago called Till I Found You. And I would, it was one of those moments. It was beautiful. There's like, I was at this church singing and there was like 75 people that walked forward to receive Jesus. And, and my heart was so, my heart wasn't bitter at all or cynical, but it also wasn't jumping for joy. It was just like, yeah, good. You should be for, yep, church, awesome. All right, Jesus. And then I looked down and I saw this guy in this, he's like this Hispanic um, young man, just kind of looked tough, you know, kind of tattooed neck kind of thing, um, sobbing and crying out to Jesus with his hands up. And I just felt like God gave me the little ounce of his love for this man. And I just felt like God was saying like, Phil, I've been pursuing all these people their whole life. I've, I pers- and I've been calling them home. And this is the moment that I've been waiting for. And I was just like, I was, I could not, I, I everything I could to keep it together. Um, that these, that the, just the joy of the heart of the father, that these people, these t- his children were coming to him. Um, it blew, it just knocked my socks off. And so on the way home, literally in the car, I wrote a song in my, like, I wrote a song called Tell I Found You. And by the time I was home, it was done. Um, and uh, the lyric is like, I, I never knew anything lasts forever till I found you, till I found you. I never dreamed anything could be better till I found you. You're rewriting my story. Now I'm brand new, like a morning. I never knew anything lasts forever till I found you. And, and, uh, and, uh, those, I just feel like on these nights and and so many people, you know, even it's, even there's some people in our crew that didn't know Jesus. It's going, it's making me cry that are so sweet. And during the process of this tour, they've come to know him like guys that are in, in, in our, they're just like, this is different. I've never been in this, this, I've, I've never experienced people like this and intentionality like this and, and Jesus like this. And I want to know him. And we've, they're crying in our dressing rooms with us as we're praying to Jesus. Except, and, uh, and people are just looking, man. And, well, man, uh, people are looking for Jesus and they don't even know. They don't even, they just need to be told. They need to be told, I know you're searching and this is what you're searching for. And, uh, and, and, and so I want to encourage all my brothers and sisters out there, like, don't be shy and timid and hold back the treasure that you have inside of you. More than ever, I'm realizing people are desperate to hear it. People are desperate oh. that, not to be like, not you're desperate for hope and desperate for Jesus. And, uh, and, and I used to think that I had to like, that meant I needed to like, do you know, do you want to go to heaven or hell? Do you know you're a sinner? Like mm-hmm. I, it's not, people aren't desperate for the, to be preached at. People are desperate to hear your testimony of how Jesus has changed your life. And they want to mm-hmm. say, can I have that too? You know, there's that we will overcome by the blood of the lamb. People need to know what Jesus has done. His blood has been spilt. He's risen from the grave. Um, and the word of our testimony um, 
If you believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is Lord and confess with your mouth that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved, you know? And like, and so people need to know about Jesus and also know about your testimony and watch how people just either say, that's not for me. It's like, fine. It actually is for you. And I just planted a seed and one day God's, you're going to stand before God. That's and right. I hope that, I hope this, this trajectory, le- or let's pray right now, you know? Um, anyways, I'm talking a lot, but I'm, I'm so fired I up. Love I love you. I love Jesus more than ever because of this tour. Oh my God. That is so, that's really incredible. I, I, I'm so blessed by just hearing about the testimonies of what's going on. Um, you know, I was just talking to Natalie Grant actually, and we're talking about how sometimes, you know, when you're in the industry and even in this industry, you know, there's formulas, uh, you know, things are curated for success. You know, how do you make a Christian, good Christian, good, you know, hit or a good church song or a good whatever. And um, sometimes that takes away that raw place, you know, of tapping into your heart, like you uh, sitting in a car writing that song because you saw that that young man you know, walk from death to life. That raw feeling is taken away if you're trying to sometimes follow a formula or whatever. Um, and, you know, I, I appreciate that after so many years, you walking with the Lord, after so many albums and such success, that that's still where you're trying to go or you're, you're you know, you're seeking those places to come up with this music. And I really think that's why God breathes on it and he moves. Mm. Honestly, I, I've tried... I mean, maybe it works. Uh, the formulas are there because some people have found them to work. But I find if I try to, or especially earlier on, people are saying this is what it takes to get on radio, or this is what yeah. it takes for this to happen. And I and I try to follow those formulas, and no one ever liked those songs, and I never liked those songs. Like, yeah. and uh, and I've just found, I've been there. I yeah, <laughs> I I just see people respond to passion and honesty, and if I, I'm a friend of mine, this is more like practical, but a friend of mine, he. he um he, he says this thing he's like phil write for your phone first when i i was kind of like what i think i asked the question in the writing room like man but what do you think people would rather sing this or that and he's like phil write for your phone i was like what do you mean he's like right that's right what we 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 want to come back to even if no one ever hears it we we can't wait to turn it on when we're on a jog or in our car and sing along because it lights our heart up like let's write for that's what lights our hearts up and i know it'll and let it light other people's hearts up too and so that's been my thing for the last 10 years It's like, I'm just going to, you know, I don't want to, I'm not writing for myself. I'm writing for the church, but I'm not going to release anything that doesn't light my heart up because it fits a formula. You know, I'm, I want it to, if I, if I'm passionate about it, then there's gotta be someone else that is too, you know? And, uh, and, and, and so I've, it's, it's a blessing that I've found that is the, the best policy is just to write what's like, what just, gets but all of a sudden I'm on my feet and I'm cheering and I'm cheering in the writing room just like yes Lord yeah this is amazing I'm like oh yeah like I bet I bet other people will do this too you know <laughs> right, so right. it's people contagious. respond to that it is it's so contagious um we'll we'll end here um this has been beautiful honestly I I am rejoicing in the Lord for what he's done on this tour and I'm rejoicing in God for what he's done even in you it's beautiful to see you um, in this posture, because this is, I think, our posture right? as the instruments of God is just to be at his, at his use, whatever he wants. And I pre- appreciate you. I appreciate you, uh, Brandon, as well, for you guys using your gifts in this way to just allow him to do what he does in a world that is getting cold. You know, um, the world is 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 hard. And um, like we said earlier, People are really desperately searching for hope. They don't realize that it is Jesus. Um, what do you What do you advise uh, ministers as yourself to not faint yourself and get overwhelmed by that, but to stay in this vulnerable, tender place that you're in? Um, I'm trying to think of the way I would. There's so many things we could talk about. I think I would just for the sake of time, but also for the sake of like, what's the, what are some of the biggest things? It's just like, and I'm saying this because I, there's seasons in my life where I can, I can be so neglected, neglecting of this. And I see it immediate change and such a drastic impact when it happens is just don't, 
don't forget to be with Jesus and be with Jesus and let him love you in the quiet moments. Let him speak to you and, and, and speak to him like a friend and a brother and a savior. And um, I, it's just, there's nothing that can, there's nothing that can come against the power of a relationship with Jesus and the power of, of having him on the forefront of your mind. And so um, this is so basic Christianity 101, but I'm saying it because I'm a guy that a lot of churches look at to, to write for new worship songs and other believers look at maybe as a leader in some way. And there's months at it sometimes in my life where I'm like, I don't think I've even opened up my Bible. Like, cause I've been so busy. I mean, I've prayed and I, but like Jesus, I have treated, I have like, I've been a Sunday morning Christian this month and mm-hmm. I sense it in the way I'm impatient with my kids. I sense it in the way I'm, right. I'm frustrated with that. You know, like that's just me being honest in my life, you know? And, uh, and there's such a direct correlation with me being soft to the Holy spirit with me being full of joy and hope with me, um, jumping at the chance to preach the gospel and excited to sing a new worship song and blessed to be with the church. It all stems from um, a quiet time with Jesus. And so please ministers out there, you worship leaders out there, um, you know, lead people to the places on Sunday that you were at on Monday morning and Tuesday morning and Wednesday morning. And not just because we need you to do it for our sakes, but also just for your own heart, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, five minutes, Jesus help me, Holy Spirit fill me, I need you today. Um, And it's so simple, but, and also all you ministers out there, man, this has been on my heart too recently because I've, this, this has been a couple close friends that have had some downfalls recently and made the wrong choices. And uh, life is so short and we need some strong men and women that are just going to choose to be faithful and not choose selfishness and not choose the road that leads to death. And I know sometimes it feels like a, you know, sometimes it feels like it's what you deserve. It's what you need or whatever it is. Um, But man, we need faithful leaders that aren't going to choose themselves. And there's not going to be some weird news coming out about you. Um, And, uh, and you're not doing stuff in secret. And so please, for your own sake and for your family's sake and for your, and for your church's sake, like choose righteousness because it's over in such a minute. I mean, it's, it's life is like a vapor and uh, guard yourself and put everything around you so that you walk in righteousness and uprightness. Um, Cause we just, we need leaders to not have another new story. We need leaders to say, I love, I follow Jesus and I am behind him all the way. And you can check my phone. You can check my Instagram. You can check everything and you will see that I'm a man of upright. I'm a woman of upright intentions and all that. And, uh, and so even right now, if stuff's on your heart, and you don't even have to be a leader, you're, you dads out there and you moms out there, you're teenagers, there's stuff in secret, man. Get rid of the death and walk into life. Get rid of the shame. And right now, and because you can be forgiven and set free of it right now. Doesn't You don't have to have some 40-step program. Just cry out to Jesus right now. Let the chains be broken. I'm praying over you in Jesus' name. Chains of healing, addiction break, all that stuff in Jesus' name. Um, there's just no time for it. It's a battle. It's it's a victory. We're standing in the victory, and you just just you need to come over to the victory right now in Jesus' name. Okay, Amen. Amen in Jesus' name. Beautifully said, and powerfully prayed. Thank you so much, Phil. We appreciate you, your ministry, your heart for Jesus most of all, and um, pray that everybody will go and worship with you. If I believe, and please continue to be an example that we can um, be proud of in Christ. Thank you. Well, please, please continue to pray for me the same. I just want to walk in, in Jesus' footsteps. I'm definitely not perfect, um, but we're on the journey towards seven. And um, you really, you pulled, you pulled a preacher out of me today. I don't know how you did it, but you did. Um, I and I love it. all you guys out there. And uh, man, um, keep following him.